Welcome to episode 39 of the Princeton Podcast, produced by the podcast production team at HG Media, providing audio and video production services here in Princeton since 1999. In this episode, our Princeton Podcast host, Mayor Mark Frieda, welcomed Adrian Calaruso, a board member of the Friends of Herontown Woods, Princeton's first dedicated nature preserve. In addition to discussing the history of Herontown Woods and the founding of the Friends of Herontown Woods, Adrian described its mission and vision to restore and maintain the preserve's trails and flora, to teach and learn about its natural and cultural heritage, and to build a center for people of all ages to creatively engage with nature, art, and history, all to honor the legacy of Oswald and Elizabeth Veblen, who gave their land and homes to create Princeton's first nature preserve. So without any further introduction, let's join our host, Mark Frieda, and his guest, Adrian Collins. Russo for episode 39 of the Princeton Podcast. Adrian, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about Friends of Herontown Woods, and maybe if you could just give us like a big picture, what, what, what is that group? What are they doing? So we are the stewards of Princeton and Mercer County's first and most whimsical nature preserve. The preserve was first donated to Mercer County in 1957. There have been other areas of land that have been added on to the original acreage that was donated by Oswald and his wife, Elizabeth Veblen, who were mathematicians at Princeton and the Institute for Advanced Study. Right now, the Friends of Herontown Woods is a nonprofit that was formed in 2013. We've kind of revived this, this public asset from decades of institutional neglect. <laughs> we call ourselves the little nonprofit that could. And, you know, we're going to get into a lot of the, the details in this conversation. But, yeah, we're, we're excited to be here to spread the words about what we're working on at the Herontown Woods and hopeful to raise awareness and just get more people to come out and use the, the nature's medicine, which is just kind of being out there among the trees. And that's, that's our goal, to just bring more people to the woods and, and experience them and help us take care of this this amazing public asset yeah and it is a great place and as you said we'll we'll chat more but it's uh, i've i've uh, been there a number of times at a number of events and it's it's a good vibe out there so why don't you tell us where is it where are these hair in town woods so it's in the eastern section of princeton off a, the main entrance is off of snowden lane right across from barbara smoyer park so there's actually a little extension of snowden lane also called snowden lane that kind of tees into the maiden snowden lane and you kind of go down this this hill and You'll, you'll arrive at the Botanical Art Garden, or the Barden, as we call it, which is right now the entrance to the preserve. And, you know, again, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about the different kind of features that, are, that make it such a special place. But that's where it is. Okay, cool. So when, was, when, you know, when were the Friends of Herontown Woods formed, created? When did that group come together? Yeah, so in 2013 it was founded, and... and uh, it was by, by three Princetonians. It was uh, Steve Hiltner and uh, Kurt and Sally Tazilar. And they kind of came upon the Herontown Woods in a state of massive disrepair. The trails were totally impassable. You'll probably recall that was right after Hurricane Sandy. It was, I think it was the prior year. So there were trees down everywhere. I mean, it was basically, you know, useless wasteland as far as for, you know, public use is concerned. So, you know, those three individuals rolled up their sleeves and worked really hard to clear the trails mm-hmm. and, and open it back up. And then from there, things just kind of evolved organically. I mean, I didn't really come into the picture until 2020, and we'll talk more about my role and my involvement. But, you know, these, these, three, these three kind of founders, they really kind of blew the doors open for what's possible at the Herontown Woods. And I think with the pandemic, with people's interest in the outdoors, you know, being so heightened, and that's kind of how I would consider how I got involved was, you know, the pandemic kind of forcing us outside, you know, like the, then it's just kind of the, the progress has just exploded since then. But in the interim, so 2017, we'll put another marker in that year. That's when, you know, give, give a lot of credit to Steve here for basically saving the Veblen house from demolition. Why am I involved in, in the board of the Friends of Herontown Woods? Why are any of us involved here? A big reason is the Veblen house, which gives us a really unique opportunity to kind of marry a public structure building with the natural asset of the, you know, the wild lands of the preserve 
and you know that that building can really serve as a public gathering space and as an entry point into the preserve to kind of those people who are you know there's a lot of nature lovers in princeton but a lot of people need kind of their creature comfort comforts to dip their toe in the water and you know that's what we envision you know the house serving that, that's the purpose the house will serve once we you know can kind of get it restored we'll talk more about that project <laughs> yeah, yeah the minor detail yeah so let's just talk a little bit more. So what's your role with the, with the board? for the? So I'm just a board member. I don't have a leadership role per se. I'm a volunteer. I'm a donor. I'm a, you know, a user of the woods, for lack of a better term. I run the Instagram account. Sometimes you might see my two little boys on, on there. You have uh, a lot of great pictures on Instagram, <laughs> which I you. always like when I you see them. Yeah, Mayor, you are, you are good at the likes on Instagram. But uh, if you've seen my two boys, Palmer and Maddox, five and three, I call them the woodslings on there. So if you see the woodslings, those are, those are my kids. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, I try to do as much as I can while raising kids and having a, a full-time job. But yeah. you know, it's fun. Oh, oh, those things. All right. So you mentioned... Three folks that started the organization, you're in it. Others involved? Other people? So there's a, there's a ton of people, and I'm, I'm not going to be able to name them all, but you know, the, the rest of the board, you know, a diverse mix of really caring people, in, in Princetonians mostly, but also some people from surrounding areas. You know, I mentioned Steve, the founder and president of the board, Dr. Inga, who's a, who's a local emergency room, Dr. Pallavi is our vice president. Ahmed is an architect who's been really involved with the Veblen House restoration. Wendy is, you know, kind of our sage. And let's make sure I didn't forget anybody. Um, and, oh, Nicole, how can I forget Nicole, who runs uh, the Mays Barden Cafe? Mm-hmm. She's one of our newer additions. And Scott Siller is our treasurer, who is just a fantastic individual. So great board of really wonderful people that we all get along pretty well and we're pretty functional. We're making progress together. And then our one staff member, Andrew Thornton, who's, who's also a long-term Princetonian, yep. he's a whimsical character. You see whimsy in the woods. It's, a lot of it's from Andrew. He's great with my kids and all kids who come through the woods, you know, building fairy gardens and hobbit holes and you know, working really hard to pull out invasive species in the Barden and you know, maintaining the trails and helping us set up for yoga. So Andrew's a fantastic individual. And then there's, you know, just tons of volunteers, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, high schoolers, you know, people of all ages, bring in their dogs, you know, so it's just, it's just a wonderful crew, wonderful community that we've been building. Yeah. So um, there's a number of aspects to the woods. You, you mentioned the Veblen House, but maybe we could just, like, it really was, like, as you said, about to be torn down. So, so what's happening with that? Let's talk about the progression of where it was, where it is today, and where it's going to end up. Sure. So you know, the Veblen House was you know, Oswald and Elizabeth Veblen's home from 1936, I think, until Elizabeth died in 1974. And it was occupied with some renters until the year 2000. But you know, then it kind of started to fall apart from there. And you know, so the, the county had owned it, and then in 2013, they put it to Princeton. They said, all right, we're not dealing with this anymore. Mm-hmm. So then Princeton owns it, and the county actually gave, us a ni- gave Princeton a nice sum of money, which was earmarked to tear it down. And then this is you know, kind of where 2017, that, that kind of came up to a boil, and, and Steve and, and others on the board at the time kind of put the kibosh on that, thankfully, you know, because then made the Veblen house there for me to discover in December 2020 when I was walking through the woods for the very first time which is kind of crazy because I grew up, you know, my whole life I grew up in this area and I never even heard of the Herontown Woods. But in any case, big progress recently was the removal of all the asbestos. So that sum of money that the county had given Princeton to tear it down, we've actually repurposed it for a big asbestos removal project, which has just been completed. And that kind of marks like, now, now we're ready. Now we can do things, right? So as a board, we are, you know, constructively with constructive tension debating well what's what's the highest purpose of this asset right princeton owns the house the friends of herontown woods is effectively you know kind of leasing the land the house and the land around it you know for a for a dollar a year or whatever from the town and it's up to us to kind of fundraise and figure out well what are we going to do with it 
So, you know, some ideas, you know, like obviously some kind of public gathering space. We want to hold events there. You know, we want to have jazz concerts and poetry readings and environmental related talks. There's a beautiful fireplace in there. I can envision it with some furniture. There's a really cool upstairs, which, you know, when I first came upon the house in the woods on my very first hike there in December 2020, you know, WeWork was very possible. I thought, oh, this could be like a WeWork in the woods. I'd love to bring my laptop here and, yeah. you know, like do some work. And if I have to take a call, I'll throw in my AirPods and take a hike around the, the woods, which that might be anathema to some people, which... <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, sometimes it's good to just be, you know, not have AirPods in and walk through the woods and experience nature more fully. We're really excited about the possibilities. I think there's a lot of possibilities. And it's nice to see the partnership between the board and the town trying to work together and letting you guys do all the work that we were not, that we're probably not capable of doing. So, And I'd be remiss to not to thank you, Mayor, in particular, your partnership. Uh, has been really you've been so supportive like we you and I have walked out there together yeah. you've shown up to our events you've you've said yes to ideas and you know I just feel like you know we're 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 good partners here and and everyone's pulling their weight yeah well the woods are a great asset and I really encourage people that haven't been there to go to go there and check them out so now let's talk well, we talked about a little bit about the house so you have the botanical art garden or the, um, bard, the Barden, bard, for sure, yeah, our portmanteau. Yeah. Our, so why don't you explain, again, because that at one point was nothing like what it is today. Yeah, so some quick history on how the Barden came to be. So it's basically a, a forest clearing. In the 30s, it was, it was apparently popular for old farmland to be reforested with conifer trees, which the state made available for like free or low cost. So Veblen planted this pine grove basically in an, an old farm field which probably dated to the 19th century down you know in that section of the preserve and it was a you know kind of monoculture like you know place and they all grew up at the same time and they all blew down at the same time <laughs> so then that left this forest clearing and then you know with uh, in the last few decades with the development of princeton and the subdivisions and people's landscaping choices invasive species like mugwort and Japanese honeysuckle and winged euonymus and privet and all these like screening plants that were designed for, you know, people's quarter and half acre parcels to screen out their neighbors move through the waterways into Harrington woods and kind of just took over this field. So, and you know, this, this is a big deal. I think for Harrington woods, like what's a kind of short and long-term goal is clearing out invasive species. Steve Hiltner, the founder and president of the board is a botanist, a very, very good amateur botanist. And, you know, what I've learned a ton from him about plants over the last two and a half years I've been involved. And the Barden started with, man, this is a real shame. This should be a more diverse habitat with native plants. So Nicole Bregman's son, I believe, with a, you know, his first bar mitzvah project, I think, he started by clearing one loop around the perimeter of this field, just one loop. And then from there, you know, more and more tra little trails got cut. And then more and more volunteers started showing up, especially during the pandemic, to continue this process of getting rid of the invasive species and transplanting native species into this area. So, and then not only the, the plants, then the kind of the botanical art, you know, you'll see the face of a person, like a, a, you know, a face it made out of stones on a tree trunk. You'll see, like I mentioned, the fairy gardens and, you know, huts and teepees and all this fun carvings and bone museums on an upturned root ball from a tree that had fallen down. So it's kind of this you know, wonderful tapestry of like human involvement, community, and like ecological diversity that we've turned it into. You know, plants are labeled. And Dr. Inga, she's our laminator in chief. You know, anything you see laminated in the woods, that's probably Dr. Inga's work. So yeah, I mean, today, you know, we got a gazebo in there. We have sheds with games and children's horses you know champion the horse and my kids like to ride it's it's just this wonderful place to like spend time and start your journey into the woods yeah yeah it's a it's a great walkway into it just it's a very welcoming space it literally uh, says welcome the welcome sign oh i mentioned another volunteer victorino we call him the chainsaw maestro maestro you know he's he's fantastic like he's a genius with the chainsaw and he's built bridges and chairs and you know, so anything fun made out of wood, 
in the in the woods there's a high probability that was made by victorino yeah yeah so another part you would you had mentioned earlier was there's actually trails right so why don't we tell us a little bit about the trails and how you get from one spot to another the trails are wonderful like you know it's nice to have the house and the garden where kind of people gather but then you get out into those trails and like you take a few steps and pretty quickly you're, you're yeah. very ensconced right if you're really paying attention to the landscape there's some there's some inclines and declines there's a you know, a secret cliff off the red trail. So the red trail is basically the, the longest trail that goes around most of the perimeter of the woods. The yellow trail is another large loop that's probably almost as long as the red trail, but that follows Harry's Brook. If you're going kind of clockwise around the preserve, you know, Harry's Brook will be on your right for a good portion of the yellow trail. It'll take you across this beautiful boulder field and take you along the pipeline and they kind of, those red trail and yellow trail loops kind of intersect each other to kind of make a little bit of a figure eight. And then, you know, there's some, there's some other trails and we're, and we're often building more. There's a purple trail that was kind of put in a couple of years ago that goes a little bit more like the south portion of the preserve, you know, kind of on the opposite side from the Barden. Um, our trail maps are available on our website, you know, go to herontownwoods.org and there's also some paper trail ma- maps often available in the gazebo yep. at the trailhead. So... Yeah, great no. trail system. And the trails are nice. I mean, it's yeah, I love them. I, I, I walk, walk them whenever around. I can. I take a yeah. if I can take a lunch break, just get a, get a quick loop in around the yellow trail. Like that's a nice you know twenty to forty minute walk, depending on how how much time you want to take. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely worth doing. Mm. All right, so now I hear there's yoga in the woods. Okay, what's going on? What is that? Oh, the yoga. <laughs> so this is so this is my my beloved yoga teacher Gemma who many of your listeners, if you, if you do yoga in Princeton, you probably know Gemma at Gratitude Yoga. In 2021, in the summer, was when we started this program. She was basic, her business was, was homeless at the time. She had lost her space during the pandemic. She had this lovely studio on Spring Street. And, you know, I, I, I'd been seeing Gemma and going to her classes for years, probably a decade. And I, you know, I said, hey, Gemma, like I'm kind of getting involved with this board on Harrington Woods. I had this idea. Why don't you teach classes at the woods. You may as well keep your community together while you search for your new home. So it was just wonderful. It was a great partnership. And I think there's a lot of like alignment and purpose behind bringing, you know, a, a community of, of yoga people into the woods, right? The, the nature is the perfect place, I think, to practice yoga. And the, the field by the Veblen house, just, it's great. We had these black platforms that were, it was a dance, it was like a dance floor that somebody had for a private party at their home and they donated to the woods. So we kind of set them up around this field and then we got a bunch of plywood boards that we pull out every Saturday morning. So it's a really great venue and Gemma has generously been donating 100% of the proceeds. So it's a donation-based class, you know, optional, like donate what you can. And Gemma just kind of passes it right along to the Friends of Harrington Woods organization. And we're starting again, June 3rd, 11 a.m. and then every Saturday thereafter uh, at 11 a.m. for as long as the weather allows. Hope to see you out there. So, Adrian, if I wanted to help work, you know, do some of the uh, volunteer and help you guys do stuff, how how do I go about that? I would just say show up Sunday morning around 10:30 a.m. You know, weather permitting is our Sunday volunteer work days. You know, sometimes I call it like nature church, like, you know, just <laughs> build, you know, be there with community, try to find somebody who looks like they've been there a while and knows what they're doing and ask them what you can do. Roll up your sleeves, but, you know, just show up on those Sundays if you want to kick the tires a little bit and like you can email us at friends in Herentown Woods and if, you, if there's any particular thing you want to do. You could also follow us on Instagram and Facebook where we'll publish events. I would just say get out there and start meeting people who are there. Um, and that's not for everybody. Some people just want to enjoy it, right? They want to go out by themselves or walk their dog and they don't want to talk to anybody. And that's, that's great too. We're, we're doing the work we do for those people as well. And, you know, sometimes I'm both of those people, right? <laughs> so uh, yeah, just show up Sunday mornings, 1030 AM most Sundays. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot, lot to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about the first Sunday of the month event? I think that's another activity you guys put on yeah so the Mays Barden Cafe referring to and as I mentioned our board member Nicole who whose idea this was and put this on May is is a nickname for Elizabeth Veblen she went by May so Mays Barden Cafe is kind of like an homage to, to her and she used to host tea for the Institute for Advanced Study so a lot of the wives of the you know professors 
they would come to the Veblen's home and she would host tea. She was also a great gardener. So, you know, this, this event is kind of, is, is a tribute to her in a way, but it's a way for us to raise some funds. We, we usually have small world coffee, you know, available for purchase and, you know, we'll, we'll have, you know, some other baked goods that people donate to sell and they're phenomenal. I don't know where we're finding these people, but they're really good <laughs> bakers. So yeah, th- if it's the first Sunday of the month, it's likely that Mays Barton Cafe is going on, weather permitting. And uh, you, you know, if you follow us on those various channels, you might, you'll, you'll probably be reminded of that fact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Friends of Herontown Woods is a nonprofit. So how do people support you? How do they help you? Yeah. So it's, it is a 501c3 organization. Donations are tax deductible in certain circumstances. And, you know, we're looking for donations big and small, really. I would say small donations are great because it's just kind of, you know, value for value, right? Like, you know, you walk the trail, how much value did you get from that? Five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever, whatever that is to you, you know, like it, it costs some money and effort and coordination, some, some infrastructure of our organization in order to keep the trails clear and, you know, keep investing in the, in the preserve. And then the bigger stuff, right? The Veblen House and associated projects, which we probably don't have time to get into the details of, but, you know, we're going to need serious funding to, to do some of this work. I know Princeton is full of people who have the means to, you know, we're looking for people with the intersection of the ability to, to fund this stuff and their love for nature and the public good. Once we have our plans a little bit more firmed up and we have something to really sell to large donors, we'll, we'll be kind of making those asks of the community soon. I think you mentioned this earlier, but I, I just want to, I always like to reinforce when we have nonprofits in for these podcasts. So if I want to, again, volunteer, I know I can just show up on a Sunday morning. So maybe if we mention the website again, but also, so can I go through the website and say, hey guys, I want to help you more? Yeah, herontownwoods.org. There's a contact form and, you know, we're at the board, we're monitoring that inbox and like something fun will come up. So people, people reach out with all different ideas. Like we're going to have a birthday party there. So, you know, we just want to set some guidelines to that person who's trying to do a birthday party. Some person wanted to do a forest bathing class. So there's all kinds of different ways that the public can use the woods. And you can kind of think of the board as like the centralized kind of clearinghouse for some of this stuff, just to make sure that it's safe and it makes sense. And the community is not kind of interfering with each other. And then, you know, also corporate volunteering. If you're part of a a team at your workplace and you want to have any number of you from half a dozen to several dozen people come out, the board of the Friends of Harrington Woods could help coordinate that. And that's one of my things that I'm tasked with is how do we get more corporate groups to come in, particularly focused on invasive species management, I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, a bunch of different species that we're going after at different times in the year that kind of pop up different times a year. It's easiest to go after this one or that one. It's a hundred acre plus preserve. When you include Autumn Hill Reservation, which we also take care of on the other side of Herontown Road, it's, you know, it's a lot of land and there's a lot of invasives out there. It's going to take an army to, to remove them all. So we're looking for those, those corporate armies to kind of come out with us and really roll up their sleeves. Yeah. And what a great team building event. You're outside. You oh, get to do awesome. some something good. You get a little exercise. I will warn you, it is hard work. It's it real is, work. It's That's real okay. hard work. Mention the ticks. There's risk. <laughs> there's, but it's really rewarding. Once you get going, it's addicting. And, you know, yeah, it's a lot of camaraderie. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, a, it's a good way to spend your time. For sure. So let's talk just a little bit more. I know there's near-term goals for the group and then there's long-term goals. Yeah. I mean, I think we'll start with like the overarching goal, which is near-term and long-term. And, you know, I was thinking about this, like on the way over here, like, why do I do this? Like, why not just (laughs) like show up to the woods whenever I feel like going on a hike and then just be done with it? Yeah. And I think this goes for a lot of people, the board and other of our like dedicated volunteers. Like, why not just like, why are we so active here? And I think the answer is that we all want to live in a community that's happy and healthy. And we really believe that nature is that exposure that creates happy and healthier humans, right? We're so lucky to live in Princeton, right? It's a beautiful yes. town. We have so many amenities. You know, we're lucky to have trees or looking out your, your office windows, the trees lining Witherspoon Street and the trees lining, you know, your street and my street on Woodside Lane. We have trees everywhere. But 
you know, if you're not driving right now and you're a listener, like open up your Maps app, your Apple Maps, your Google Maps, whatever your apps, put it on satellite mode and find the Herontown Woods and look at the green, look at the contiguous space that's, that's so precious, you know, like the rest of, of Princeton is cut up in these subdivisions. Uh, but this is, I mean, th- this is a precious commodity, this contiguous open space where you can go in and be wild. <laughs> you know, it, 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 there's so much benefit that comes from that. We want to live in a happier, healthier Princeton. And that means that more people need to walk through the woods, right? And hey, when you walk through the woods, it actually makes it easier to take care of the trails. So we want more people walking the trails, beating down the, the plants and the trails, keeping them keeping us informed of when things go wrong and we need to fix it. And then also, you know, other ecological um, benefits that we get from these woods. Hey, if you live downhill from the Herontown Woods, you are benefiting from the water retention abilities of these woods. Right. Huge. I mean, walk out there during a rainstorm. Like I've done this. I love walking out there during a rainstorm. You see how much water it holds and it redirects and man, like impervious coverage is, there's a reason we have zoning restrictions around impervious yeah. coverage. Like, that's an amazing asset for this town. Yeah. It really so it's is. important that we take good care of it. Yeah. Yeah. And we're glad that, that you are and you and the rest of the board and your, and your volunteers. So anyway, it's amazing how quickly time goes by when you're talking about very interesting topics. Adrian, I really want to thank you for being here talking about Friends of Herringtown Woods and encouraging people to check it out and go over and take a visit. Yeah, please. That's as simple as that. We hope to see you out there. And thank you so much for giving us this chance on the Princeton Podcast. There you go. Thank you for joining us for the 39th episode of the Princeton Podcast, produced by the podcast production team at HG Media, providing audio and video production services here in Princeton since 1999. If you enjoyed this episode of the Princeton Podcast, please share it with your friends. Visit our website at princetonpodcast.com and be sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Amazon Music, or wherever you listen to podcasts.